What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and we are diving into yet another faction focus article for Warhammer 40k 10th edition, this time checking out the Adeptus Custodes. And Custodes look to be probably one of the cleanest transitions from 9th edition to 10th. A lot of their abilities are changing and are going to work mechanically differently than they did in the previous edition, but they're still going to remain familiar and they really mesh with the 10th edition mechanics. So let's jump in with their army abilities. Marshal Kataz see a return with a huge overhaul. The previous Kata stance mechanic was honestly a little bit of a convoluted mess. You picked Kataz at the beginning of the game. You could then flip them in an order or use abilities to switch them. Then each Kata would be in effect for multiple battle rounds with having different effects every battle round. It was a lot to take in. This new system is much simpler. Simply at the start of each fight phase, you select one of ability from the list and you get that for the remainder of the fight phase. This means that katas that enhance your movement, ability to perform actions or ranged attacks are gone, but to be fair, that does kind of make sense with the mechanic. The three abilities you have to choose from are Keptaris, giving you a minus one to be hit in melee, very powerful effect to survive alpha strikes from opposing melee armies. Dakatare stance, giving you sustained hits one, so additional hits on critical hit rolls, and Rendak stance, giving you lethal hits, so critical hits automatically wound. All of these effects are super powerful, but your entire army has to choose which one you, so you can't pick and choose an ability for each unit that you want in a specific situation. So picking the most important one for the biggest and most useful combat is certainly gonna be part of the skill of using this ability, but regardless of what you pick, all of these abilities are super duper strong. Giving custodians a simple, straightforward, and incredibly powerful faction ability. Their detachment ability for the shield host detachment, which, which will be the release detachment for the custodies, gives them back their Aegis ability from previous editions, a four plus feel no pain against mortal wounds. This was the faction ability that Emperor's Chosen got you and made the army much more difficult to kill with things like smites and psychic powers. In the new edition, the usefulness has switched over a little bit. It's transitioned from being super powerful against psychic powers and psychic heavy armies that could inflict mortal wounds. Now those psychic armies armies will not really be inflicting that many mortal wounds at all, just choosing to attack you normally. However, weapons with the devastating wounds characteristic are going to be incredibly powerful in this edition, and especially against profiles that custodies have, which tend to be mid toughness, high armor save, and invulnerable, those weapons are incredibly good against custodies. In this case, you will still essentially retain your 4 plus invulnerable save, even against units with weapons that have devastating wounds. A bit interesting that the use case of mortal wounds has changed a lot. It's gone from being very much a, a mechanic centered around psychers to one that is mostly about being hit by big and devastating powerful weapons. Tank shocks, grenades, weapons with uh, armor penetration characteristics, those are where mortal wounds are uh, being generated from in 10th edition. And Custodians are going to be pretty resilient against that. And we do also see some unit spotlights. In fact, we have more data sheets in this article than we've had for most factions in the game so far. The first one being the great man himself, the Captain General Trajan Valoris. And this dude is nutso. He has a pretty strong base profile. We do see that Custodians are increasing in toughness, going from toughness 5 to toughness 6 with Trajan at that T6 level. However, only 7 wounds, which is a little bit of a trade-off given that he used to be 8. He has a 2 plus save, an objective control value of 2, which is going to be standard for most Custodians infantry we see, a very strong leadership value, and a bunch of powerful core abilities. He's got Deep Strike built in, allowing him to teleport onto the table and join units that have Deep Strike. He has a Feel No Pain 5 plus, so we see that ability transition over from 9th edition, and he is a leader. What units he can join, we don't know yet, but I imagine it will be most of the infantry-based custodians. Like all custodians, he has a 4-plus invulnerable save, and his headliners are his special abilities. While he's leading a unit, you ignore any modifiers to characteristics of models and or any rolls or tests that they make. So this is going to be things like desperate breakout tests, leadership tests, battle shock tests, charge rolls, any of that are being removed. Trajan doesn't necessarily make your attacks more consistent, he just removes your opponent's ability to interact with them in any way. Especially things like leadership and battle shock, we've seen a ton of abilities that impose penalties or get bonuses when units fail, and Trajan joining a unit ignoring all those penalties and keeping himself on its leadership value of 5 means that Tyranids, Demons, Chaos Knights are all going to be 
pretty sad to play against this guy. And they should be also sad because his moment shackle has gotten an enormous glow up. Once per battle, at the start of the fight phase, you can choose one of three abilities to grant Trajan. These are all basically a, an equivalent to the abilities that the moment shackle had in previous editions, but they've been reworked to work a little bit more smoothly. Trajan used to fight twice, once at the, during the fight phase normally, and then using moment shackle at the end of the fight phase. That has been replaced by, uh, he doubles the attacks of his Watcher's Axe, which makes total sense. He could also turn a damage roll to zero, which he usually used if he would die before using the moment shackle to fight twice. That now has been changed to giving him a, four, a two plus invulnerable save. This is a big deal because this ability is no longer reactive. You're not waiting for your opponent to hit you and then buff his save against one attack. Instead, you're basically just blanking all of your opponent's attacks that would go into Trajan that turn. Now, it is important to note that as a character, if he is in an attached unit, he cannot be assigned attacks unless those attacks have the precision attribute and your opponent can choose whether or not they use precision on him. So most likely if he triggers his two plus invulnerable save, they will not be attacking him specifically. They'll just attack his unit, but that's a good way to keep him safe. And if his unit is killed, which he will probably not take too much damage if the unit is destroyed, given how survivable he is himself, he can then wade into combat and trigger that two plus invulnerable save. Now, whether or not that happens, I'm not entirely sure because the last ability of the moment shackle is absolutely ludicrous. It gives his unit the fight first ability. Now the context here is that in 10th edition 40K, the defending player in a fight phase always chooses the first fight. If you have the fight first ability in your opponent's fight phase and they have charged you, your fight first unit will still get to go first. So if Trajan Valora still has the use of his moment shackle active for the game, he is gonna be functionally immune to enemy charges because any enemy unit charging into him will have to eat a round of attacks from Trajan and his unit before swinging themselves. And any unit that can attach Trajan Vloris is probably gonna be pretty good in melee, especially since you will also get to choose a Marshal Kata that both he and his unit will benefit from. So uh, this dude is crazy. He can wander around the table doing basically whatever he wants and enemies are gonna have to really tiptoe around him because you'd never wanna get in melee with his unit. He can also just protect other units. He can threaten heroic interventions. He can play super aggressively. And if your opponent can't shoot his unit to death, they probably just don't even touch him. Once he gets into melee, he can use his Watcher's Axe. This has gotten a pretty big downgrade. It is six attacks at two plus weapon scale, strength 10, AP2 for three damage. It's a pretty solid profile, definitely not blowing the doors off anything, but given the fact that melee profiles in 10th edition are generally less powerful than we saw in 9th, this is par for the course. Now, moving on to some of the units that he can potentially be joining, we also see the Alaris Custodians, and we see the increase in toughness being represented here by their impressive toughness value of seven. They're also retaining their four wounds, a pretty decent leadership value of six plus. Definitely not gonna see a universal five plus across the faction like we have. So these custodians are mostly gonna be hoping for attached characters to make them very resilient against Battleshock. They have a base two OC value, which is impressive. They retain their two plus save and four plus invulnerable, but they have gone to a slower movement of five inches. The unit itself can deep strike and can use their special ability from Golden Light, allowing them to once per battle at the end of your opponent's turn. Nailed it, good job team. To pick up off the battlefield and deep strike the next turn. This potentially allows them to use rapid ingress or a similar ability to get up close and personal with their opponent in an early turn. They can lose some casualties and then just use from golden light to move back, hold a backline objective or reset for a different charge later on in the game. Despite being movement five, Alaris custodians are actually gonna be incredibly maneuverable. That's buffed even farther by their Slayer of Tyrants abilities, which gives them full wound rerolls against character, monster, or vehicle units from any attack. Armed with both the ranged weapons attached to their spears or axes, which are two shot, two plus ballistic skill, strength four, AP one, two damage, losing the rapid fire characteristic for assault so they can advance and shoot without penalty now. And they don't have to be at half range to get that second attack. They get it out to the max 24 inches plus an 18 inch range ballistic grenade launcher shooting D6 blast shots, hitting on twos at strength four AP one, one damage. If you have a character attached to a unit, these guys are gonna absolutely vaporize it, given getting a ton of attacks at strength four AP one with wound rerolls hitting on twos. On top of that, they'll also get those benefits in melee against those units as well. So if they're fighting character units to get wound rerolls, even though their strength values are sort of mediocre, they're gonna get enormous numbers of rerolls against vehicles. So vehicles are not really safe against these guys. And those melee weapon profiles that they're using are either the Castle and Axe, Guardian Spear, or Misericordia. Imagine that the unit will have Misericordias that they can swing if they want to, but if they have the Guardian 
Guardian Spear, there's really no reason to have the Misericordia. It doesn't, it's just strictly worse. The Castle and Axe is four attacks, hitting on threes instead of twos. At strength nine, AP one, three damage. Higher strength and high damage characteristic, but that AP value is very low, which is a little bit sad. However, strength nine is an important cutoff for dealing with light vehicles. Things like transports and land speeders are most likely to be around toughness nine, so wounding them on fours with three rolls makes it very consistent. The Guardian Spear is five attacks instead of four and hits on twos, so it is much more reliable, but only strength seven. However, a higher AP value of two. Guardian Spear here definitely seems pretty good to me. You are wounding most vehicles on fives, some on sixes like monoliths, but five with three rolls for an extra attack and extra weapon scale in exchange for damage, but you get extra AP, seems pretty good. So doing the math here between these two weapons, things are actually pretty wild. Because they have additional attacks and hit more reliably, the Guardian Spear actually has a better interaction with Martial Katas, and having it wound rerolls against characters and vehicles and things makes that Strength 7 lots very consistent. The Axe is almost literally only reasonably advantaged against Toughness 4 enemies that have 3 wounds, and Toughness 14 enemies that the Spear would be wounding on 6s. Or big enemies against which the AP of the spear doesn't matter. So things like demons that only rely on their invulnerable save. In almost every other situation, the spear is superior, which makes the axe not very useful. And the Misericordia attacks five times at hitting on twos at strength five AP two. This is probably used for chaff if you have a weapon that attacks less often or with a lower weapon skill. I also realized after recording that the Vexillus carrier, if you upgrade that into the unit, will probably have this weapon too. Now the last change we see on this data sheet is an important one and it heralds the removal of the Vexillus Praetor as a unit option. This is because the Alaris Custodians can now take a Vexilla inside their unit. This increases their objective control characteristic up to three, making them incredibly good at taking objectives away, but is likely that the Vexillus in included in these custodian boxed sets, which is usually where you get them, is no longer going to be a separate character. It's just gonna be a unit upgrade for the unit, which to be fair makes more sense and is gonna be incredibly strong, especially if we see any custodians with higher OC values. If we see base like baseline guardian squads at OC three and they can go to four, that would be ludicrous, but we just don't know yet. Now last and uh, certainly Definitely the most mediocre. We do see the prosecutor's data sheet. These have been changed quite a bit. These previously gave huge defensive effects and auras against psychers and psychic powers, but their usefulness has changed a little bit. They have lost a little bit of speed going down to speed six from speed seven. Toughness three with a three plus save, a one wound, a solid leadership value of six, and a good OC value of two. They're just gonna be the chaff objective holding battle line option for the custodian army like they have been in the past. They have a bolt gun. It has a bolt gun profile that we've seen before and a two attack close combat weapon that does hit on threes. However, the most exciting abilities of these are always in their abilities section. They have a three plus fill no pin against psychic attacks. Previously, they were untargetable or unaffectable by psychic attacks and gave a minus one to cast aura. No longer. Instead, they just get that feel no pain. However, they get huge bonuses when attacking back at psychers. They get both the precision and devastating wounds ability when shooting at enemy psychers. Precision allowing them to assign damage to characters and devastating wounds, converting their critical wound rolls into mortal wounds as we talked about before. This allows the unit to fire into the psyker units with a light psyker, something like an Imperial Guard Primera psyker, some sort of support caster, and have a pretty reasonable chance of killing them with mortal wounds. Now moving into the weapon section, we also see a weapon spoiled for the Vigilators, another sister of Silence unit, excellent at killing psychers. This is their executioner, Great Blade. It attacks two times at a three plus weapon scale at strength five, AP two, two damage. Pretty solid profile. However, it gains the anti psyker four plus and devastating wounds characteristics. So it's gonna wound any psyker on a four and on that four plus convert those hits into mortal wounds because it becomes a critical wound. <laughs> this gives Vigilators an actual use case. I think I've made fun of them in the past for being just one of the basically most useless units in the game. They're a mid speed, mediocre melee unit that takes the place of objective secured troops options in ninth edition and is worse at fighting than anything else in the custodius codex but now they have a very specific anti psyker role they are incredibly effective at killing enemy psychers in melee and if that's a necessity in the metagame this model is going to be amazing. Now we also have a stratagem spoiled for the Adeptus Custodius Shield Host Detachment, and this one is pretty spicy. Vigil and Ending is the name, and it's usable in your command phase for only a single command point, and returns one destroyed model, not a character, to one of your units with all of its wounds remaining. Importantly, this is only targetable on Custodius Infantry that are not Anathema Psychonos and not Sisters of Silence units. So mostly it's going to be things like Custodian Wardens and Alaris Terminators you're going to be use looking to use this ability on. But the ability to return models 
models to the unit uh, obviously is going to be incredible. It allows you to extend your threat range because you could put them at the leading edge of your coherency. And given the new coherency rules we've seen in this edition, it's going to be easy for custodies to maintain coherence because they only move to the more complex coherency rules at seven plus models rather than six plus like they do in the current edition. So you can throw that model with a big base out in front of your unit to extend your movement a little bit. You're also going to be able to not only bring models back, but potentially get yourself above half strength to ignore any battle shock test that would come from having a damaged unit. And obviously you get a custodian back to the table, which is probably a 60 or 70 point model, depending on the unit that you're using this on. This stratagem is really cool, really interesting, and gives a lot of interesting options to custodians. I can see a situation where you have a Trajan in a big unit, your opponent doesn't want to engage that unit because Trajan will allow them, them to fight first and kill you before you swing. So they shoot at you, but Custodian defensive profiles are good enough that that shooting only kills a couple models. You Vigil Unending, extend your movement a little bit, and then get that unit up into center objectives or into even charge range and just mess up your opponent's day. Overall, Adeptus Custodians are looking incredibly powerful. I'm really impressed by this reveal article. It seems like their mechanics are pretty straightforward. They harken back to 9th edition without directly copying them and are super useful in the new edition. So let me know down in the comment section if you agree with me. Big thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Thanks as well to everybody who supports the channel, either over on Patreon, the patreon.com slash tactical tortoise, YouTube channel members and Twitch subscribers. All your people are great and I love you. Everybody keep it classy folks and have happy wargaming.